Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from ROETutors.com and welcome to this video on nucleophilic substitution reactions with hydroxide ions and water. So this in this video we're going to look at the mechanisms behind uh, these two reactions and mechanisms are really important in chemistry because they help to show us how the reaction actually happens and it's all to do with the movement of electrons. So you're going to see a lot of uh, curly arrows in this video and a lot of electron movement as well. So we're going to look at this, the first word of the title which is nucleophilic. So we're going to look at the word nucleophile. A nucleophile is just a species that has a lone pair of electrons. So that's what I've put up on here. And the word nucleophile means nucleus loving. So this is a species that will go for something that is delta positive or is electron deficient. Uh, and I'll show you where these are uh, as we go through some examples and show you what they mean. Some examples of nucleophiles that you may come across, again, it depends on the exam board. You need to check the specification to make sure you know um, the, the mechanisms that you do need to know. But examples are water, ammonia, hydroxide ions, and cyanide ions. And all of these have a lone pair of electrons. Two of them have a negative charge, and two of them don't. So it's not always, um, they don't always have to have a negative charge. Like I say, the crucial part is the lone pair of electrons. So, we're going to draw mechanisms. Now, you'll see some curly arrows drawn, and it's really important that we need to know what a curly arrow is. A curly arrow is basically uh, the movement of electrons, and it goes from a, a, an area of high-density electrons to an area of low-density electrons. And places where curly arrows start are generally bonds and areas with a lone pair of electrons. So, uh, for example, a nucleophile. So, we're going to do two reactions here. Uh, we're going to do a nucleophilic substitution reaction with sodium hydroxide, and then we're going to do it with water. So we're going to start with the hydroxide one first. So you can see what I've done is I've drawn down uh, bromoethane, which is on the board there, uh, and I've drawn down a hydroxide ion. Now hydroxide ions normally come from sodium hydroxide, so this is a solution, uh, a very alkaline solution, uh, and it will... Um, react with your haloalkane. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to write down where our delta positive and delta negative uh, uh, charges are. So on this molecule, on the haloalkane, because halogens are very electronegative, which means they pull electrons towards themselves in a covalent bond, uh, effectively what happens is it develops a delta negative charge because it's pulling the electrons closer to itself which leaves the carbon with a delta positive charge. It's really important that you're able to identify the uh, polarity in the molecule as well. Okay, the curly arrow is going to go from the lone pair of electrons, because that's where that's what we said where curly arrows start, and it's going to go to an area of electron deficiency, which is going to be the carbon. Now you've got to be really careful when you're drawing mechanisms. You've got to be really specific. It's going to go from the lone pair directly to the carbon. You can't be ambiguous, otherwise you won't get marks in the exam. It's really important to be specific. Okay, what this means is the electrons are moving from here onto this carbon. So what we're actually doing is we're actually trying to form a bond with the carbon. Now carbon can only bond four times. You can see it's got one, two, three, four bonds already. Now one of these bonds has got to break uh, and it's the weakest bond that breaks. In this case, it's going to be the CBR. CH bonds are really strong. Uh, and so this one will then be kicked off effectively. So we need to draw another curly arrow to show the breaking of this bond. Now, the electrons, because this is forming a bond here, the electrons from this bond will then move onto the bromine atom on there. So you can see it goes from here onto there. So we're going to draw our curly arrow, and it's going to show electrons going from the bond to the bromine. Again, it's really specific. You've got to do that. Okay, then we're going to draw a product. So we're going to show what we form. So we form this. We have our two carbons, because this bit's unchanged. And the bromine is being kicked off, but the OH is now part of this molecule there. So there's our OH. And we also have our Br minus, which is left at the end. The reason why it's got a minus charge is because it's just picked up an electron from the bromine, uh, from the bond, sorry, going into the bromine. That's why it's got a negative charge. We call this uh, a fission reaction. We call this bond fission. Uh, this is called heterolytic fission because both electrons from the bond are going to the bromine, and that's why it has the negative charge. So if they ask about the type of bond breaking, if it's a what type of fission it is, it's heterolytic, 
meaning different. So meaning both electrons are going to one side. Uh, there is homolytic fission, but that occurs when you have uh, radicals and UV light, which we'll go on to later in a different video. Okay, so there's our product, and you can see we form methanol, which is, uh, sorry, ethanol, which is our product there, plus our bromide ion. Now, I've written down the full equation here to show you what's happening. So there's our bromoethane reacting with, let's say, sodium hydroxide. It'll form sodium bromide. This is our salt. Uh, that will be floating around in here, uh, and then you've formed ethanol as a product. Okay, there's another way to make uh, an alcohol as well, and it's using water, but this is a little bit more complex, a little extra step in here. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to add our uh, delta positive, delta negative, so delta positive carbon, delta negative bromine on there. And then we're going to draw our curly arrow, and again, it goes from the lone pair of electrons onto the delta positive carbon, and then again, the bond breaks from the bromine. Uh, so that's what we form there. Now the difference with this one is we're now going to form an intermediate. So I'm going to draw it out here. There's our two carbons and our hydrogens. Now this time we've got an oxygen, but the whole water molecule has added itself onto there. And what that does is it gives it a positive charge on that oxygen because it's got too many, too many bonds. Its electrons are being shared over too many places. So that's why it's got a positive charge. So now it's effectively deficient in electrons. So, and we also have a Br minus as well. Now what happens is this is an intermediate. It only exists for literally a split second uh, and it'll rearrange itself to stabilize uh, the molecule because this is really unstable. So you can see we've got a positive charge here and electrons have to come from somewhere to try and stable that. And what happens is electrons comes from either one of these, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so it comes from, I'll pick this bond, the electrons come from this bond and it moves into stabilize that positive charge on the oxygen. Uh, and effectively we are now breaking this bond because the electrons that were in this bond joining the oxygen and hydrogen have now jumped into the actual oxygen atom. So there's no bond there anymore. So now what we formed is a new product so I'll redraw it out here, CH3, CH2, OH. So the OH is there and we also have a H plus sign because this has now been, uh, this is now, this whole thing here has been kicked off to form the H plus. Now these two would then react together and then form HBr. So uh, here's the overall reaction, bromoethane plus water will form uh, ethanol plus hydrogen bromide, which is at the bottom there. But um, that's it. You must make sure your uh, curly arrows are going the right way. Um, and must make sure that uh, the lone pairs are on your molecules as well, as well as your charge. Just one final thing, actually. Uh, the reason why it's called substitution is because we're substituting uh, a halogen for an OH. So we're swapping it from one molecule with another. So you can see here that uh, we did have bromine there. Now it's an OH. We did a bromine here, now it's an OH. So that's why we call it a substitution reaction, and we're doing it with a nuclear file. And that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.